ABC Shark Tank has seen many successful businesses and simply appearing on the show can be enough to boost your sales. However, getting one of several of the sharks on board can turn your business into a real hit and today we are going to count down the top 15 most successful Shark Tank deals. In season 6, Nick Oluksak and his wife Elise entered the tank to introduce their bagel business called Bantam Bagels. The couple were looking for an investment of $275,000 in exchange for 11% equity stake in the company, which produces and sells mini bagel balls filled with cream cheese. They ended up making a deal with Lori, who invested $275,000 in return for 25% of the company. When the two pitched their idea to the sharks, their sales were $200,000, while they boast a whopping $51 million in sales today, making it one of the most successful deals in Shark Tank history. Steven Aristotle founded Tower Paddle Boards in 2010, after witnessing the sport's rising popularity on the internet and in real life. Two years later, he pitched his business to the Sharks, seeking an investment of $150,000 for 10% of the company. While he unfortunately choked during the pitch and eventually had to give up three times as much equity for the same amount of cash, Aristotle has no reason to regret his decision. After partnering up with Mark, the company grew quickly, with $43 million in sales, this is not only one of Cuban's favorite deals, but also one of the most successful ones that he has ever made on the show. In season 5, Barbara Cochran decided to invest in a husband and wife duo's lacy leg warmer company, Grace and & Lace, and little did she know that this would turn out to be one of her most profitable Shark Tank investments ever. For $175,000, Barbara got 10% stake in the fashion company that made over $49 million in sales in the years since. When co-founders Mark Neuberger and Jeffrey Simon appeared on the show in 2012, they introduced one of the greatest inventions of the 21st century, the drop stop. This foam-filled log that fits in the gap between a car seat and the center console prevents you from dropping keys or other items in the Carmuda Triangle, as they will still be within easy reach. Their hilarious pitch secured them a deal with Lori, who invested $300,000 in exchange for a 20% equity share in the company and the duo went on to sell millions of drop stops in the US and internationally for an incredible $38 million in revenue. Brothers Brian and Michael Special entered the tank in Season 9 seeking a $50,000 investment for 20% equity in the company, the original Comfy, which produces a blanket sweatshirt hybrid. While the Sharks loved the Comfy, they had their concerns, but the brothers eventually received two offers, one from Robert Herjavec at $50,000 for 50% and the other from Barbara Cochran at $50,000 for 30%. After some haggling, they eventually accepted Barbara's offer and considering that they have since made $37 million in sales, they probably have no regrets about giving up more equity than they had initially hoped. Longtime friends David Levitch, Eric Liberman, and Dan Gershon started the novelty sunglass company Sun Statues together in 2011 and appeared on Shark Tank in 2014, where they made a deal with Damon John, who invested $300,000 in exchange for 20% equity in their company. They soon made deals with large retailers such as Toys R Us and Party City, as well as licensing agreements with Marvel, Nintendo, and Warner Brothers Studios. Today, the company the company has done over $33 million in sales, and the goofy sunglasses with attached mustaches have become one of Shark Tank's most surprising successes. In Season 8, Tara Brown introduced the sharks to her Sleep Styler, which are heat-free hair rollers that curl your hair while you sleep. She eventually struck a deal with Lori, who invested the $75,000 for 20% equity that Tara had asked for. Although the Sleep Styler doesn't have the best ratings on Amazon, for example, the company boasts sales of $72 million to this day, making this another one of Lori's many successful deals on the show. 
Evan Mendelsohn and Nick Morton entered the Shark Tank in season 5 and introduced their ugly sweater company, Tipsy Elves, and eventually walked away with an investment from Robert Herjavec of $100,000 for 10% equity in their company that makes ugly Christmas sweaters for themed parties. The company quickly started turning into a success and it also gained a bit of fame thanks to a licensing deal with the movie The Night Before, starring Seth Rogen, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, and Anthony Mackay. In addition to festive sweaters, Tipsy Elves also make ski gear and costumes, and even made custom Tipsy Elves warm-up suits for Jamaica's bobsled team for the 2018 Winter Olympics. The company appears to have a bright future ahead of it, as Robert Herjavec's $100,000 investment back in 2013 has turned into more than $117 million total sales since, and it doesn't look like the success is going to stop anytime soon. Lori Grenier had no idea that the deal she made with Aaron Cross, founder and CEO of the company Scrub Daddy in season 4, would turn out to be one of the biggest success stories in the show's history. After a long bidding war between Lori, Damon, and Kevin O'Leary, Cross struck a deal with Lori who gave him $200,000 for 20% equity in his company that produces sponges made of polymer, which changes texture, soft in hot water, hard in cold water. The little Scrub Daddy sponges with smiley faces are now a regular feature in many American households and have pulled in over $197 million in sales to this day. In 2014, Bobby Edwards and his mother went on the show to present their business idea, the Squatty Potty, a stool placed under your feet to help you do your business by allowing users to squat over the toilet and thus help with constipation. The idea resonated with Lori Grenier and Kevin O'Leary, who invested $350,000 for 10% of the company, and it seemed like viewers loved the product as well, leading to $1 million in sales within 24 hours of its appearance on Shark. Tank. Today, the company has done around $153 million in sales and has also expanded to other products like an inflatable porta squatty and higher end potties, making this one of Shark Tank's greatest success stories. In season 6 of Shark Tank, Deanna and Josh Harbour made a deal with Mark Cuban and Robert Herjavec that saw the Sharks splitting a $1.2 million investment for 10% equity in the couple's online women's fashion retailer, The Red Dress Boutique, and Cuban taking a lead advisory role. In the week following their appearance on the show, the Harbours made $1 million in sales but also had trouble keeping up with the demand. Their advisory shark helped them solve infrastructure issues and the Red Dress Boutique brought in $14 million in revenue in 2016. Mother and daughter co-founders Gloria Hoffman and Linda Clark entered the Shark Tank in Season 7 to pitch their Simply Fit boards. These core balance devices are basically curved exercise boards that are meant to strengthen abdominal muscles. Before appearing on the show, they had done $575,000 in sales, and within just 24 hours after their pitch aired, they did another $1.25 million. They left the tank with a deal by QVC Queen Lori, who invested $120 $25,000 in exchange for 20% of the company. Within a matter of months, the company's sales went up to 9 million with placement in Home Depot and Walmart locations and the company's success did not slow down. To this day, Simply Fit Boards have made an incredible $177 million in revenue and has expanded across the US to Europe and Asia. Back in 2012, cousins Sabin Lomack and Jim Selekis decided to bring the famous Maine Lobster all the way across the country when they set up a gourmet food truck in Los Angeles specializing in lobster imported from Maine. They soon had a thriving business and, eager to start a chain, the cousins decided to throw their lobster idea into the shark tank in November 2013. They eventually made a deal with Barbara who gave them $55,000 for 15% equity and helped them make their ambitious expansion dreams come true. Around three years after first appearing on the show, the cousins already had 18 food trucks throughout the country, and today their franchise boasts $67 million in sales. And consumers who are outside of their vehicle reach can also order live, claw-snapping Maine lobsters from their website. 
In season five, Spencer Quinn and Eric Child stepped in front of the sharks with a new and innovative idea called Fiberfix. This product is a heavy duty repair tape targeted to the do-it-yourself handyman and general consumer market as an easy and inexpensive way to make repairs. Asking for $90,000 for 10% equity, the business partners eventually struck a deal with QVC Queen Lori for $120,000 in exchange for 12% equity plus funding for purchase orders. The company has made $66 million in sales to date and according to their website, Fiberfix has grown from a single product to an internationally recognized brand with many inventive repair solutions sold in over 30,000 retail locations around the world. When David Heath and Randy Goldberg read about homeless shelters struggling to find socks, they decided to start their sock company Bombas, which sells re-engineered athletic socks and for every pair they sell, they donate another pair to charity. They appeared on Shark Tank in 2014 and pitched their idea to the Sharks, eventually going home with a deal. Damon invested an incredible $200,000 in exchange for 17.5% of company and surely has not regretted his decision for even a second. Bombas turned out to be one of the show's biggest success stories, with the company becoming profitable in 2016 and having done $104 million in sales to this day and also adding t-shirts to their product line this year. Thank you for checking this video out and don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe for new videos every day. Turn that bell notification on and comment down below that you subscribed and we'll make sure to reply and thank as many of you as we possibly can. Once again, thank you for watching and see you next time.